Hey all, it's Vanessa Love. All right, so today I wanted to talk about altered paintings and altered books. So I have taken a lot of art classes in order to feel very comfortable with all types of art materials. Um, and, and I actually love hearing um, the processes of different artists because I just, like, it's so interesting to me. So it, it relates, I, I promise. <laughs> so I bought a canvas from the thrift store down the street from where I live, and I changed it. Uh, it was not a great piece. Uh, honestly, it was, it looked like one of those pieces that someone who like not really like very confident in their artistic skills and might have like gone to one of those like paint night classes might have done and it just it needed a couple more layers it looked kind of brushed um so you know they donated it obviously they hated it or whatever um and so um you know I picked it up and, and I was able to uh switch it around and I actually really like it um there's still a little bit more work to do on it but overall it it's very much improved um it was like a tree with a background um, and lots of paint on there that made it look like there might have been an attempt at like, these are flowers or these are blooms, but they weren't very good attempts. Um, and you know, for those paint nights, some people love those paint nights and I very much like love that those paint night nights exist because I like, I would imagine that those, those are very hard to, you know, instruct properly but actually pretty fun to do once you know, I guess uh, some people drink the entire time so that they're like, get loose and out of their head and everything. And you know, that could definitely be really great for some people. Uh, this piece just wasn't dynamic. It wasn't a strong piece. So I added more layers to it. Um, I changed a, a couple of the colors around and, and as I said, I, I, there needs to be a couple more layers, but I like it. Um, so I know people who would never want to do anything like that because there's kind of this like, hey, that's someone else's artwork, don't touch it. Um, but you know, uh, I see my own paintings in my friend's apartments and uh, my fiance before we were engaged and before we lived together. He bought one of my pieces and I'm like, let me switch it. Let me change it. Um, and he, he and my friend won't let me um, change my piece. And so it's kind of like one of these things where I'm like, well, I get a chance to like fix, you know, other pieces. And, and I do it occasionally. I'll just go to the thrift store, buy a couple of pieces. And I'm like, these. either I'm going to paint over it or I'm going to like add to it. And that's really fun for me. Um, I also uh, take old books and change them. This is this, um, it, it's, it's an art technique, but it's also an art therapy technique. It's called, um, altered book. Um, okay. So the reason, so a lot of people who are not artists would never do this because we have a sacred idea of books and in every dystopia that you ever read, right? The books are the first to go. Um, well, these aren't like the books that are going to like that really change society. This is like the 50 cents, you know, copy of some book that now has better research or is updated um, or just was crap when it came out, you know, so it wasn't very popular. Um, these aren't like classics. Uh, you can take the classics and do this. Um, but you obviously have to be very far along in where you are as an artist and how comfortable you feel with these type of art materials in order to do something like that. Um, I choose not to, uh, take, you know, Socrates or Plato or something. Uh, but I, I know some of you might find this offensive, but like Star Jones, I don't really care about her. She wrote a book. I don't really care for it. So I found the book and I have been uh, doing all sorts of like alterations to it. And there was one book that I had that I probably would have read, but, uh, cause it was about like mind body connections. 
but uh, the 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 information was outdated at that point, and um, it, the pictures were really interesting. And I went to town on that book for years. So the cool thing about altered books is you take these things and you can do all sorts of things that you just don't usually do, I guess. Like I wouldn't take one of my um, sketchbooks and like carve into it, but take a crappy book and, um, you know, paint all over it and carve into it and like either make it a secret, you know, box or um, what some people do and I haven't done yet is um, they make it so that they can carve into it, right? So they carve into it, but the but they carve into it so that you can add like a matchstick box basically into there, and you like you can um, add. So it's kind of like a Heidi box, you know, like you get to like pull these things out of this box that it, it, this book box thing that you made, you know. So you know, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking like, okay, so um, I have this like p. It, it, for the piece of artwork. I have this piece of artwork. It's not that great, but if I add all of these different colors and I tweak it a little bit, it makes a more dynamic piece. I have a couple of layers. And I was thinking like, okay, so I had this client and uh, so adult female client had problems with showing up on time. Now that just requires a tweak. You know, uh, she had been in therapy for a year and she did write a testimonial for my webpage. Um, but like, she just needed a tweak. She otherwise is a very active person, a very um, caring person, a very um, like creative person otherwise, but like she had a couple of things that just, if you tweak them, she's a stronger dynamic person, right? And um, I think that's like one of the ways that art therapists really do like the altered books is because you can take it and it's already this pre-made book and it might be kind of crap, you know, um, but you can take it and completely change it and make it into this like whole other thing that could be useful or dynamic or, you know, like tell your story instead of telling someone else's story, like you make it your own. And that's what a lot of art therapists love about altered books is you make it your own. What I love about sewing is you take a bunch of raw material and you make it into this thing and you're like, oh, uh, well, I saw a shirt in that the entire time. And I kind of feel like that's how I do therapy is like, well, I saw who you are the entire time. You just didn't know what it was going to look like. And, you know, like I could see where we're going most of the time. And it's like, and I love doing that. One of my favorite artists who I've actually met and um, there's a story to this too. Oh, uh, there's many, many stories, I guess. So one of my favorite artists is Terry Flowers. Terry Flowers does assemblages. So assemblage is where you take, like, I have a couple of figures. So let me, um, so like if I took these two figures, right, I'm not actually going to make them into a piece, but like if I took these two pieces and I put them together in some way, in some dynamic way, and, um, you know, just kind of made them into their own story, their own thing, um, then that would be an awesome watch because they are um, different than a collage. Like collage is just like flat pictures. These are like three dimensional things. Okay. So um, he does awesome watch. What he does is he takes, so, so he told me this, he has a shed in the back of his house that he owns in California. In the shed is a bunch of pieces, you know, just like what I've shown you, uh, from thrift stores and yard sales and all sorts of things. So he keeps them back there. Um, I think with a bunch of magazines, too, because I know that he does, like, flat artwork as well. Um, I love his artwork. I don't know. <laughs> so what he does is he takes this one piece and he takes this one piece and you know, he could have bought them years apart and, you know, one he buys two days ago and he puts them together and it's a dynamic piece. And again, I feel like that's therapy where like you take all of these things that don't seem that important. And for me, I take them all together. I, and I, you know, just kind of make this 
different meaning, this different thing, this different story. And that's how that, like, it's, it's this incredible thing. You know, you leave here, you know, I've known some of my clients to leave sessions and just go, I would have never put those two pieces together. I would have never to thought, never thought that those things related in any way, but you were able to choose this one thing and choose this one thing and make it together. And here we are, you know, like it's powerful. It's so powerful. So, you know, like there's definitely ways to make these pieces of artwork and make them so that they're completely yours, but there's also this way to improve yourself. And, you know, this is what I'm saying where I love art therapy. I just don't really like other art therapists. And by the way, Terry Flowers totally like had to like defend himself against this really awful art therapist who did not have any boundaries. And um, so he did all of these pieces. And of course, as I said, I love the process. I love hearing about processes. Well, she walked right up to him and asked him if he ever had suicidal thoughts. No, hi. No, how are you? No, hey, your artwork's amazing. Tell me about it. No, do you have suicidal thoughts? And I, I was offended. I wanted to know how he made a skeleton out of um, paper mache. Um, he has this really awesome piece. He made it out of paper mache. Like, I, like I, I'm not that great with paper mache. I can't imagine making a skeleton out of paper mache. And he did, you know, and like, it was this completely dynamic piece. And I think most of his pieces at that time were about, um, being a, an ex-Catholic. And I think that if she would have looked at his pieces for more than two seconds, she would have seen that because there was a lot of iconography, especially Catholic iconography in his pieces at that time. So like, no, you don't get to come up to someone and in public, in public and say those type of things. Like that is, this is not a patient. This is not a private setting. This is not, this is not the time, the place, like, or the person to talk to about this. Um, he luckily said, Hey, I'm alive and breathing. So no, I haven't. But you know what? Like, what if he said, yes, yes, I did. I, I had a suicidal attempt yesterday. You know, like, who are you to have that, that conversation right there and then? That's, it, it's so insensitive that it, it, it like, I, again, I'm still offended by it. And I'm like, it, I think this was 2010 when I went out to California for the American Art Therapy Association uh, conference. And uh, this woman did that. I just, oh my God, it's so crazy. Anyway, well, <laughs> I hope that was helpful. Um, I just kind of had this thought, so I thought, you know, I'd share it. And um, I hope you continue watching. Thanks so much.